COVID-19 Musical Chairs. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. In our last video, we talked about the supply chain lockdown, the effects of the COVID-19 virus in China, how it was going to affect the world. The world's number one vendor shut down, that economy has shut down. It's been shut down and this is going to have a huge ripple effect on the rest of the world. And there's other channels and blogs talking more about the virus itself, but I'm actually more worried about what is the contagion from the virus. What is the effect on the world's economy and how does this fit into the prophetic picture that we've seen that the Bible foretells us about? We can see a certain description of the world mentality also, things that the world's going to be doing during the days that the Son of Man is revealed, when he comes to pick up his purchased possession. And in our last video, we talked about how the warnings of peace and safety, how they went out at this time, at the very city where this event started. There's a lot that raises some red flags that this is very suspicious. This is being done deliberately, it does appear. They appear to know the timing of it all, the timing with the peace and safety warnings. And that ties in with what Scripture says. When they say peace and safety, you know some destruction comes. And Scripture is using that to tell us what we will know but that clues us in on what they know. They know a lot more to a script that they're working from. And when we can see their involvement in it with the warnings that Scripture tells us, when you hear this, sudden destruction is coming, and we see it in time with the celestial signs that the Lord has led us on, the tapestry of redemption bringing us to this very point, the theme of he is about to make his enemies as footstool. We see so many things coming together and right here in this early springtime too. We are not surprised that the enemy does appear to be very busy with something being done deliberately. And we already know from everything coming together that sun destruction is coming. And the more that we look at it and the more we look at what scripture tells us about different criteria and what the world's going to be doing, we get a really good idea of how long is this window when we can expect the Son of Man to be revealed during this time. And so far right now we're in a lull because the world is still evaluating what's going on with this virus, what's going on with the economic impact on the supply chain on the different countries, how's it going to affect us. So the world's in a little bit of a limbo, they're still trying to gauge what exactly is going on. But in the meantime the world's still going on largely and for the everyday person life as normal. But we can see just from looking at it from a logistics point of view and from a secular world view too as well, things are about to change just on what is happening there that we do know for sure. And we can definitely see the situation is not improving, which means the end result is going to be even worse. So as Christians, we need to look at what's going on in the world from a Christian perspective. Are we listening to the warnings that we've been told about? Are we looking at the criteria? And are we also watching the world events that are going on, the geopolitical situation, to see that the criteria that Christ gave about when he's going to return, it's only going to be for a certain time period and a certain window. Because the way things are going, things that have been set in motion leading up to, it appears, the sun destruction, we know those criteria of the world's symptoms, how they're going on, life is normal right now, we know that is about to change. The situation is about to drastically change, and it's already being changed. And this is what I want to drive home in this video here. The situation has already changed, but most people have not recognized it yet. And the real damage is about to come, though. The sudden destruction that Scripture warns us about. And we see regularly in the news right now, every single day, it's almost like another shoe is dropping of another major breakthrough that this contagion, this virus, this impact there in China, it's going to be for a lot longer. It's not letting up. Just the other day, Wuhan announced that they're going to make 19 more makeshift hospitals. And these aren't actual building hospitals. They're turning existing venues such as stadiums and event centers. They're turning those into makeshift hospitals. And that's what they're talking about. But they're having to make 19 more. This is not letting up anytime soon. And there's also more and more articles now in the secular news talking about the impact on the supply chain. And they're really starting to notice that the supply chain, the factories over there in China, are starting to bear the brunt of it. They were able to weather it out for a while, just sit back and see. But we're getting to a point where weeks after they have shut down, they can't do that forever. And even the world is saying, this is going to start causing factories over there in China to shut down and go bankrupt, close permanently. If this keeps going the way it looks like it's going, and we can already tell by the rise in infections and the continued lockdowns and all that, that yes, it is going to continue. Which means that we can expect the tightening on China's side of the supply chain, the manufacturers, the factories, the ingredient suppliers, all that. They are going to be impacted first with lasting results. When we look at the timeline, we're just over four weeks after the Chinese New Year, the start of it. We're just over two weeks after the end of it. 
but we are approaching 30 days from the midst of the New Year's, that time when the lockdowns went into effect, the factories were shut down, people were staying home, people weren't getting out, shipping stopped. So we're approaching a very important milestone that the world is looking at, different suppliers, logistics individuals. They're looking at it. We're about to reach a point where we're going to start feeling on our side of the ocean what's going on over there in China. And the resounding chorus is by mid-March, that's when we're really going to start noticing. And that's pretty much when the average person is going to start noticing too because shortages are going to be more pronounced. They're going to start showing up more in the visible aspect of the world that most people live in besides the logistics aspects and the back offices of corporate world. By mid-March is when the world is going to start taking notice of it. We are in a window right now though where the world has not largely felt the impact of it yet. There's different small manufacturers and companies affected by it now and noticing the effect of it but there's still a padding right now where we are right now in the window. You know the Amazon warehouses still have a good amount still in stock still in their warehouses. A lot of other stores have stuff in their warehouses still. There's a bit of padding in the inventory, but they're going through that. There's already gaps showing up, and there's already gaps that are known, but those gaps aren't showing up on the consumer end yet, so the consumer side of it has not noticed this for the most part. But come about mid-March, the consumer side of the economy is going to start noticing the impact on them. And this is what we have to always keep in mind with the situation in China right there, especially with the supply chain. We are not seeing the effect of what has already happened. If you're waiting to gauge and see, okay, is this really going to impact me? Don't. You're going to miss the whole window of opportunity. What we are seeing now and what we will see in about three weeks will be the result of something that happened back at the beginning of the Chinese New Year. If you're familiar with the game of musical chairs, there's not enough chairs for everybody and everybody goes around the chairs as long as the music is going. Everybody walks along pretty fine while the music is going. But what happens when the music stops? Everybody rushes to the chairs. And there's a loser who doesn't get into the chair at the very end because they're the last ones to notice and to act on it. But the safest individual is the one who sits down first and also the one who has an idea of when the music is going to stop. And this is an analogy I want to use with this whole China and virus situation. What we're seeing with the virus impacting and the lockdowns on the beginning of the Chinese New Year, that is essentially when the music stopped. China and the enemy, the ones involved in the back rooms of knowing what's going on here with the sun destruction that's coming, they knew when the music would stop. China knows when the music has stopped and China has sat down. The rest of the world though is starting to catch on that the music has stopped. But most of the world has not yet made a scramble for the chairs yet. And this goes back to the worldwide economy. The worldwide economy is engineered for collapse. That's just the way it is. It's, it's debt, it's fiat based. They know the economies, both of the United States and China, they will eventually collapse, and they're already on the verge of collapse too. The dollar is destined as a phoenix to help usher in the New World Order. We don't have time to talk about all that. They know it's a controlled demolition of the world's economy. So when you know that is coming, you don't just let events run rampant by themselves. You want it to be done in a controlled manner, which is what they appear to be using the virus as a cover for, a cover for the engineered economic collapse. You want an economic collapse, you want the chaos, because that's going to help usher in the next world order. But again, you don't let it happen out of control. You do it in a controlled manner so that you stay in control of an economic collapse that will spread like wildfire. If you are the first one to sit down, then you can manage the economic collapse. The first one to feel the effects of it will be the first one to recover. And so this is important to note. They knew when the music would stop. They are already sitting down. They are already locking down. China is in a unique position because they're able to have a controlled shutdown of their economy right now and their population. They're able to do all this in a controlled manner, but they do know what's coming up very soon. Very soon, the rest of the world, the other economies, are going to start making a scramble for the remaining chairs. It's going to get chaotic really soon. The sun destruction that scripture tells us about. So when we look at this whole contagion, we must always keep in mind what is zero day. When did the music stop? The music stopped on Chinese New Year. That's when the major lockdown started. And that's when the factories shut down normally, but they did not open back up since then. So zero day from all this, when the music stopped, was Chinese New Year. And what we are observing now with the supply chain all goes back to when the music stopped. We are only observing this because we know the music did stop. 
The rest of the world, the average consumer has no idea the music stopped. They're still going on life as normal. Their spending habits, their buying habits haven't changed. Their major activities in life and goals for the year ahead has not changed because they are not aware that the music stopped. So let's look at the supply chain. It's going to quickly spin out of control, but there is still a window before the average consumer catches on to it. Right now, very little is moving still with the shipping going out, vessel sailings. They're still being canceled and delayed because of insufficient capacity, supplies are not coming. So there's still a trickle coming out, but there's a lot that is locked up. It's locked up in the transportation system over there. It can't get out of the factories. It can't get between the factories. It can't get out of the cities. It can't get to the port. There's a lot that is still locked up. There's been no real change in the situation. And on top of that, the suppliers are already saying once the factories do reopen in China, there's going to be a massive log jam at the ports when everybody rushes the ports with all their supplies. That log jam is going to cause an even further delay getting it out of the ports and getting it shipped because of the log jam of everyone hitting the ports all at once. So already they know it's locked down now, but even once it starts up again, there's going to be another major huge log jam and headache even once it does open up, which is again going to further delay and push out things. Keep in mind, there are orders and cargo containers and exports that are waiting to be shipped that haven't been shipped since the beginning of February and even late January too. But there's a ripple effect along a chain. And if you ever gotten a chain or rope and you've flipped it up a little bit, you see a wave go down the chain or the rope. And that's what we're seeing right now. An action on one end is traveling down the chain to the other end. The most immediate impact of this lockdown in China is of the surrounding Asian countries, the ones that do the most immediate business transactions with China. So it's China's neighbors are the ones most directly impacted, and that's something we have to keep in mind too. Factories in Vietnam and other countries that are right nearby China, those factories are going to start feeling the pinch way before we do. And so that adds to the logistics challenge because some U.S. manufacturers, they can't just switch manufacturing from China to, say, Vietnam or South Korea because some of those are also impacted, too, because they're waiting on supplies from China, too. They're already more impacted than we are over here in America. The United States is feeling an immediate impact, and Canada and Japan will also, too, as well, because of our heavy reliance on exports from China. The European Union, on the other hand, will feel more of a second round of impact after the United States and those Asian countries are impacted. But what we're seeing right now with China, with the supply chain, we always have to keep in mind China sat down. They locked down. They stopped their shipping. They literally sat down when the music stopped. They aren't moving. But the rest of the chain is going to feel this real soon, some quicker than others. And what we're seeing is not just points of the chain. We're seeing the whole chain is going to collapse. Because again, remember, China has been shut down for a month now. How many businesses can you think of that can be shut down for a month and still stay open? How long can they do that? Not very long. When the world's second largest economy shuts down, all the businesses and the companies and the factories and the manufacturers within that country are going to be impacted. The longer they don't produce something is the longer they don't sell something. And the longer they don't sell something, the quicker they can't pay off their debts. And with the economy over in China and the United States too, many manufacturers and factories are very much in debt, operating on debt. So we need to think of this knock-on effect. What's going to happen? The longer they stay closed, the more debt they're going to get, but then they're going to reach a point because they're not selling anything, they can't pay off those debts. So what's going to happen? Those businesses will have to declare bankruptcy. They will have to close down. Debt defaults. That's already common in China. You're going to see a huge wave of that real soon here very soon. The longer the shutdown lasts, the greater the extent of the damage done permanently on the different factories because they're closing down. They can't not economically survive. But then that same debt default is going to start rolling further along the chain too. The longer this lockdown happens, the quicker that debt default, that debt contagion will spread along the rest of the chain. What happens when those factories start closing? You start seeing gaps opening up permanently in that chain, the supply chain. Those suppliers are no longer there. And what's important to remember is that this is going to be permanent. When one supplier closes down, that will have a ripple effect of other manufacturers and factories in that area. But then they'll have a further impact down the supply chain. The longer this is delayed, the more links in the chain will be closing permanently because they can't stay open. They're running out of capital to cover their labor expenses, cover their operating expenses, keep the lights on right now. They are quickly running into debt. And then, of course, they're losing business. There's already a lot of their customers who are already telling them we're looking elsewhere because we need our supplies now. 
So already every single day that they're staying closed, they're losing customers. They're having orders canceled, which means they're not going to be pay off their debts. They're not going to pay their expenses, which means they're going to have to, have to default on debt, bankruptcy, or just walk away in the middle of the night, which isn't uncommon in China either. With the economy over in China, a lot of those businesses, those manufacturers, they're operating already on very thin profit margins. They produce it cheaply, they sell it cheaply, which means their profit margin is very small, which means they don't have much of a buffer. They don't have a padding to weather being shut down for over a month and losing their customers during that time too. So pretty soon we're going to see a rolling effect of companies, suppliers closing permanently, just disappearing, those gaps opening up in the supply chain which is going to cause a tightening further along in the chain. There's going to be a lot of factories in China that will not reopen because they're going to be closing permanently. The factories won't reopen and the workers won't return. And there will be a lag effect before the U.S. corporations realize that factory is not opening up again. And that is when there's going to be a panic rushing for the last chairs. China knows the music has already stopped. What we're watching now is just the results of something that's already been put into motion. This is what we need to always keep in mind. We are not watching new effects. We are watching an event that happened at the Chinese New Year. The music has already stopped. The panic is about to start. Pretty soon, the debt defaults, the bankruptcy, the continued closing of the factories in China, that's going to start opening up gaps in the supply chain in the United States and other countries depending on exports from China because there's a load of U.S. businesses that rely on cheap Chinese goods. And they are already operating at thin margins over there in China, but the same thing for the U.S. businesses. They are already operating on thin margins here too, with a large debt on the balance books too. So what happens when U.S. businesses, which have a thin profit margin already, can't get supplies from the factories that already operate on thin profit margins that allow them to produce it cheaply? The U.S. businesses will not be able to get their supplies cheaply, which eliminates their thin profit margin, which means they can't pay off their debts, which means they're going to be going under business too because they can't tread water for long. You're going to see a lot of businesses go belly up in China and in the United States and other countries that are heavily dependent on China because many of these companies owe money to various creditors and they can't put that off for long. They are losing customers. They are losing money every single day, which means they're not getting money to pay their bills, to pay their creditors which means eventually something's going to go, and it's going to go real quick. And about the time the businesses start really feeling the pinch, that's when the customer base is going to notice, hey, things are really changing in our world here, and what that is going to do is cause a lockup of disposable income. They're not going to be buying like they were because a lot of their options have changed. Their stores are being impacted. The consumer buying side of it is going to lock up too, which is going to further impact the companies that are already on a thin profit margin trying to make money so they can pay off their debts. The economy is going to come to a very quick standstill here when the consumer starts realizing they need to start saving their money. They need to stop spending money on just trinkets and junk from China. They really need to start focusing because there's a huge ripple effect happening to their economy and they are at risk of losing their job at the factories and the service industries that rely on China. It goes far beyond just the factories. It goes all the way to the workers who are dependent on the companies that are dependent on China. The music has already stopped, but not everybody has noticed it yet. And this goes to what scripture tells us. We will see the day approaching. What is that day? The day when our Lord starts making his enemies his footstool, when the tribulation events start, when the judgment seals are opened. The day of sudden destruction is coming, and we are told we will see it approaching. And this is what we got to keep in mind. We will see it before it comes, which means we will also have a very good idea of that the window is getting smaller and smaller too because we will see it approaching we will see a decrease in the number of days the time before the day the day of sudden destruction and how will we see the day approaching how will we see this window decreasing by observing what christ told us to watch for luke 17 26 and as it was in the days of noah so shall it also be in the days of the son of man they did eat they drank they married wives they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which is upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. 
and he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. These are instructions from our Lord to his disciples, warning us of how the world is going to be going on life as normal when he comes to pick up his purchased possession. But he ends with a warning. Remember Lot's wife. If you have not let go of this world, if you're still tied to this world and your heart is still tied to this world and your stuff, remember Lot's wife. She was left behind. And Christ was emphasizing, pay attention to where your heart is. Your heart will be where your treasures are. This is why he said, in that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. When the door of heaven opens at the rapture, everyone's going to notice it. And those who are outside, they're going to realize this is it. The Lord is coming. And apparently there's going to be just enough time where people will be tempted to go back inside to their house to grab something or to look at something, to long at something maybe that they had just recently purchased. There is going to be a slight delay between when people realize the rapture is happening right now before they're actually picked up. And this is what Christ was warning about. Remember Lot's wife. What happened to her? She looked back against the instructions the angels told her, don't look back. So what happened to her? She was left. Even though she was destined to leave during the evacuation, they left her because her heart was really back in Sodom. And this is what Christ was warning us, his disciples, about. Remember Lot's wife. When I come, disciples, make sure your heart is not here with this world, not with your stuff. And Christ emphasized he's coming while the world is still mindful of their stuff, is still mindful of how they are living. They're going on life as normal. And notice that he used both examples of Noah and Lot. Both those examples, life was going on like normal. People were eating and drinking. They were marrying. They were making long-term plans for their families, for their careers, for their businesses. They were making long-term plans. They were still thinking months and years ahead. And this is what Christ tells us. Pay attention because the world is still going to be thinking long-term. Nothing has disrupted them. Also notice that commerce and the economy is still going. They're eating and drinking. There's no shortage of food. And then he mentions a very critical indicator. They bought and they sold. Again, the economy hasn't collapsed. Regular commerce is still going on. There's been no major disruptions to the way they're living to the effect where it hasn't changed how they are living. And Christ emphasized this is the world mentality that's going to be going on when he comes back. And we must remember Lot's wife or else we will be stuck in that same mentality. It also goes with his instructions in Luke 12, 33. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning, and ye yourselves and the men that wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants, whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet. And he himself will serve them. He is looking for servants that are living as though their Lord is about to return. We are watching for him. And not just watching with our eyes, we are watching with our hands and feet. We are girded up, ready for work. We are involved in work. We have our lights already burning. This is what he said he wants to find. He wants to find us working and with our lights burning somehow. Watching with our life. Not just watching YouTube videos, but watching with our life. Are we doing something? Are we living as though he's about to return? And notice he prefaces the promise of reward for those servants with instructions that the servants are to do. And it all revolves around where is our treasure. Our treasure is going to be where our heart is. If our heart is here in this world, that's where our treasure is. If our heart is already set on things above, that's where our treasure is going to be. And that's what we're already going to be working toward. And notice in verse 33, he starts out with sell that ye have and give alms. This is important when we remember the criteria that Christ gave about the days of Noah and Lot. What is going to be going on in the world during that time? They're going to be buying and selling. So when we put these together, we get a very interesting window. We can only sell what we have and give alms, give toward good works. We can only sell during a time when there is buying and selling, right? And notice Christ was not giving a suggestion. He was giving a command. He wants us to sell what we have and to be involved in good works somehow, giving alms for the benefit of somebody else, for others, considering others. This is why we are to provoke one another unto love and to good works, considering ultimately somebody else. Why? Because we're about to leave. We're not taking any of it with us. We're not taking our stuff with us. So Christ says when you know you're about to leave, sell your stuff 
so you aren't attached to it and give it for alms for good works to demonstrate love somehow use it because you're not taking it with you and again when we combine it what christ said later on about the days of Noah lot they are buying and selling right before judgment that also needs to emphasize to us when we know sudden destruction is about to come when we know that day of judgment is about to come we better be part of selling our stuff so we aren't attached to our stuff remembering lot's wife remembering the story of lot because our lord is coming during the days of noah and lot and our lord wants to find us not with our heart on our stuff he wants to find us with our lights burning these go together Christ is looking for wise and faithful servants who are doing far more than just watching for him. They are living for him, they are shining for him, and they are paying attention to the instructions that he gave because they are very detailed. So again, when we remember Christ told us he's coming during the days of Noah and Lot, and it should catch our attention, one of the major focuses at this time, at least economically, is on shipping, <laughs> which goes with Noah. But the more that we look at the current economic condition of the world, particularly the supply chain, which is going to give us the best clue of it, we can start seeing that there's a window of buying and selling going on right now, but it's not going to be going for much longer because things are going to really start tightening up, particularly with companies and larger businesses and then ultimately down to the consumer too. So there is a window where we are expecting our Lord because there is a period when the buying and selling is going to be peaking and that same window is going to be very specific where we can sell our stuff and so much the more knowing he is about to come, following both of his instructions. It's going to be during the same time period, which is where we are right now. And again, if you watch the news with all the new infections coming up, the new makeshift hospitals they're making, again, you have to push out the quarantine and lockdown for at least 14 more days. Some are saying 23 days, some are saying 26 days. So you know, just by watching the news today, nothing is going to change in the situation over there, particularly with the supply chain, for pretty much three weeks till the middle of March, where it might change. Between now and then, it isn't going to change. All those companies and factories are still going to be locked down. There's not going to be any shipping. And again, the longer they are not shipping, they are not selling, which means they are not making money, which means they are going to start dropping like flies, which means the latter part of March, you're really going to start getting some really, really bad economic news from the closures in China, from the shutdowns permanently, that part of the supply chain. And that's also when more companies are really going to start feeling the pinch from supplies that aren't showing up too where it's going to be starting to affect their bottom line even more so. So between the midst of March and the beginning of April, that's when things are going to start getting a lot more apparent of this is going to cause damage, serious long-term permanent damage. And they're already saying now, in April is when you're going to see shortages show up on the shelves for the average consumer. And there's also going to be major medical shortages from the supplies and what's used to manufacture medicines. That's when it's really going to become obvious to everybody in April. So where we are right now, for about two more weeks, we're in a time where ignorance is bliss, basically. The average person is not that much aware of the virus. They might have heard of it, but they're not aware of the long-term effects that it's going to have on them. They're not aware that the music has stopped. So the average person is still going on life as normal. Only those in the upper boardrooms of companies and manufacturers and those who work in purchasing and logistics, they have a, a much clearer idea that things are about to really seize up here real soon. And most of them started panicking a month ago because they know how delicate the supply chain is. But for the average person, life is still going on like normal for about the next two weeks at the most. Every day more and more bad news comes out that really accentuates how bad the situation is. And again, that's two weeks from now based on the assumption that things start getting better. But what happens if more bad news comes out that things are not getting better and the lockdowns going to be even further? You're going to see this window of two weeks possibly get even smaller. Once people start realizing things are seizing up even quicker than we thought, it's spreading to other manufacturing areas as well. That will certainly shorten down this window of where ignorance is bliss while people are still buying and selling and they haven't changed their life habits or their long-term plans yet. Let's keep this in mind in light of what Scripture says. The latter half of March, you're going to start seeing more people concerned and with a mild panic. They're going to start putting off discretionary spending. They're going to start realizing, eh, I need to invest in things that might get pretty scarce here pretty soon. And you're going to have more people start studying this situation. So you're going to start seeing a change in spending habits during that time. 
Come April, though, when it's really obvious to everybody, there's going to be grave concern with everybody. And people are definitely going to be carrying down their expenses to the bare minimum, the bare essentials only. There's going to be a drastic change in lifestyle. They're not going to be investing in redecorating their house or building a deck or going on vacation because it's going to be apparent to the world come April that the entire economy has changed. Their employment is in grave jeopardy. There's going to be many manufacturers and factories and service industries that are definitely going to be feeling it and laying off people around that time. So people are going to be having drastic changes to their spending habits come April. What we are seeing right now, where we are for about the next two weeks at the most probably, we're at a time right now of peak selling. And if you're in finance, you've probably heard of that, sell at the highs, buy at the lows. We're at a point right now of peak selling. If you have something to sell, now's the time to sell it and sell it quickly. Because real quickly with the world news, the more it becomes apparent that the music has already stopped. And the more people start realizing the music's already stopped and the music's not starting up again. Then that's going to lead to really weak selling. People buying only what they have to and trying to pay the bills in spite of all the jobs that are being lost. So where we are here at this time of peak selling, again, if you have something to sell, now's the time to sell it. Do not wait. Sell it now. Because right now, this is the peak days of Noah and Lot. The world's lifestyles largely haven't changed. People are still under the hope that maybe things will return back to normal. So right now we're in the peak days of no unlocked. But real quickly it's going to be changing to a drastic drop in both buying and selling. That's going to change a lot of the criteria when Christ said he's coming. He's coming while people are still buying and selling. The economy is still humming along and people are still going on. Life is normal. And he's painting a worldwide picture on average. So we have to keep this in mind with the worldwide economy too. Right now. We see that time is still very short. We see the day approaching where the criteria is about to change, which means we're right here on top of where Christ said he's coming. This is why he said, when you see all these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads. You will see a celestial time. You will know your redemption draw off nine. Then you'll start seeing so many other things that tell you he is not even at the door. And you will also know that sun destruction is coming. And you will see that day approaching, getting closer and closer. Because you will know that you are running out of time when the criteria of the days of no and lot is about to change. So where we are right now, at this time, so much the more, let us pay attention to Christ's instructions. Here are a few suggestions for you. Right now, I would highly suggest you sell anything of value right now. Don't wait. Sell it now. Because real quickly, as people start realizing that their jobs are in jeopardy, the discretionary spending is going to start going out the window every day that we go forward from now. Start selling your stuff now while people are still buying stuff now. Rush to avoid the panic and the monetary tightening. Once people start realizing that what's going over in China is going to affect them and their wallet, they won't be buying and selling quite as liberally. So now is the time if you have something to sell, now is the time to do it. And I would also suggest take a strategic loss. Price it to move. What you would normally sell it for at this time, take 10% off so people will jump on it right away and it'll move and sell quickly. Make it as easy for them to want to buy it and to buy it at this time. Because very quickly people are going to be hemming and hawing a lot more over buying stuff. So right now you have to take a strategic loss so that it will move at all. Price it to move. Sell it on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or online classifieds. If nothing else, take it down to a pawn shop. Sell it so you get quick cash in hand. Now is a time when we must realize the window for buying and selling anything is very small. You have maybe two weeks at the most. Now is the time to sell what you have if you're going to sell anything. Now is also the time to heed Christ's instructions to sell things and to apply it toward things of eternal value. We sell things that we aren't taking with us to buy things that we are taking with us that are already waiting for us in heaven. Right now is the time to sell anything of value, but now is also the high time and so much the more to buy things of eternal value. Buy things that could be a witness to those left behind, such as Bibles and gospel tracts and particular Christian resources that could help them, but also food resources or medical supplies or things that you know will be needed in your particular situation. Invest in buying things of eternal value, things that will be used by others. But also invest in established ministries for fruit. Like Christ said, sell that you have and give alms. And sometimes that involves giving to other ministries who are already more focused and dedicated on that and can bring forth more fruit. They can do a lot more with it for you on your behalf because that's what they already specialize in. Let us invest in our corner of the vineyard, but also realize that there are investments elsewhere too that will reap fruit for his harvest as well. 
Now is the time of triage where we realize we need to do the most good with the resources we have, with the remaining time that we have. Now is the time when we need to realize we need to use what the Lord has given us or we're going to lose it. And that's the lesson that Christ gave in the parable of the talents, particularly the servant who wrapped his talent up in a napkin. He said, I'm not going to use it, so he ended up losing it. And we're at a window of time that definitely deals with buying and selling while it's still going on, and also Christ's instructions, sell that ye have, and use it for something of eternity. Use it or you will lose it. Are we following Christ's instructions? Are we buying oil? Are we shining bright at this late hour when we know the bridegroom cometh? What are we doing during these days of Noah and Lot? Are we remembering Lot's wife? I highly recommend you download these PDF resources, links in the description box, when to watch for the Lord's return. This specifically covers the days of Noah and Lot. How are they going to be living? What are Christ's instructions for us in light of those instructions? Let's keep all this in mind, Christ's warnings about the days and remembering Lot's wife. Let's make ourselves ready so that we are found shining bright with our loins girded up, that we are ready and we are watching with our heart and our life for our Lord when He does show up. Let's be found running for the prize. Realizing our treasure is in the world, we want to be found running for things of eternity. Definitely download these resources, print them out, study them, especially at this late hour where we know that time is so short. We know sun destruction is coming. We see the day approaching. We also see that we are decreasing in time available to apply ourselves and so much more to what our Lord wants us to do. Again, also our disaster crash course resources, print them out. These are a great use for people in the days ahead. And also definitely watch our Purify and Sanctify playlist. Let us draw near to the Lord with a true and genuine heart and let us seek Him for wisdom of what He wants us to do. We are at a critical time in the days of Noah and Lot where we see that these conditions are ripe for our Lord's return. We also see that the world is about to change whether they are ready for it or not. We already see that the music has stopped. We see that the day is already approaching even from a secular perspective. The events have already been put into motion. Our world is about to change. Now is the time when we need to take advantage of what Scripture forewarns us about so that we can live for Him so much the more. We know that sudden destruction is coming. We know these prophetic events, the celestial events, the geopolitical events. We've been forewarned about all this in Scripture. We are told that it's coming. We can also see the events on the ground and how the Lord's working in our own lives, telling us this is the time. Time is so very short. Let's apply ourselves to the Lord's harvest to bring forth fruit for His glory. And so much the more as we realize that we're at a time when we're running out of time. Let us buy oil that will shine even after we are gone. Let's rise up together. Let's trim our lamps. Let's shine bright for our Lord. Let's go out. The bridegroom cometh. Let's go out to meet him. Let us be found drawing nigh to him with a true heart, hearing him, loving him, and serving him, first and highest above all else, till he comes. Maranatha.